Hey everyone, so it's Cooking with Anto here, and this week I have two recipes in one video. Very exciting. I'm making pernil with arroz con adule. What? You thought this white girl did not speak Spanish? Of course I do. I don't tell people because I like to know when they're talking behind my back. Genius. Anyway, it's not as hard as it sounds. It's just pork shoulder or picnic cut that's cooked in the oven for several hours, marinated first for a day or two, and then cooked in the oven for several hours, and then some rice and beans. I mean, if you don't really make rice and beans a lot, you could probably mess it up, but just follow my easy steps, and then it'll taste delicious. So anyone who's ever been to any of my parties or holiday gatherings know that um, I'm always going to make pork shoulder, and it's requested of me all the time. Last year for my daughter's party, I made 18 pounds of it, and there was none left over. So at the end of the night, when I was like, I want a snack on it, and I looked, and I was like, oh my God, we have none left over. And I didn't even have as many people last year as I did the second year. I think her second birthday party, I had 50 people. And last year, there was only like 38 and 18 pounds of pork went. It was unbelievable. And I also made like meatballs and pasta and everything else. Anyway, you've ever been to any of my parties, you know that you come with an empty stomach and pants that stretch because you're going to eat a lot. I um, really prepare for my parties well in advance. And um, I usually don't get sleep the day before because I'm prepping and doing all of it alone, plus some cakes and sweets and things of that nature because I'm a psychopath. And I enjoy cooking for large crowds of people. It's just something I've always enjoyed. So anyway, um, some parts of this video, my camera's having a hard time focusing. Um, so while you're watching the video, you may see a little bit of blurriness. I apologize for that. I've actually fixed the problem a little too late. But just, you know, ignore that. There are some parts that come out a little blurry. And, um, yeah, if you try the recipe and you like it, let me know. Leave a comment, share, subscribe, etc. Thanks for watching. Bye. All right, so on to the video. First and foremost, I'm going to apologize for this horrible audio quality. While I was recording my video, for some reason, it picked up no audio. So now I'm doing a voiceover with a computer microphone. That's horrible. So what we have here is sazon, adobo, garlic, cilantro, oregano, water, white vinegar, and onion. That's what I use to marinate my pork. A lot of people don't use cilantro. I do. It gives it a nice balance of flavor and some freshness to the pork. All right. So what you're going to do is now you're going to take your pork out. Okay. A nice piece of pork. This, I believe, is somewhere around six pounds. I'm not really sure. can't remember. I ain't going to lie to you. So we're going to get underneath this skin right here. You see this long piece of skin? You don't want to pull it off of the pork completely. You just want to get underneath it. So you're going to take a very sharp knife. Carefully and slowly at first, you're going to cut immediately underneath the skin, but not into the meat, if that makes sense. The point is we're going to get this slab of skin pulled back so that this way we can put our marinade in there. And um, I also have some um, garlic cloves that I've had. And then I stuff them into the pork. You'll see that a little later on. So continue doing that. How far back when you when your knife start when you start feeling the bone on your knife, that means that you've pulled the skin as far back as you can go. Okay. Now this is a really dense piece of meat. So if you don't do this process, you're not going to flavor any of that meat under underneath the skin, and you don't want to go through all this trouble and then have half of your pork shoulder tasting like nothing. Don't do that. So do you see what I'm talking about, how dense this is and it's full of fat? Okay, without that skin being flapped over, you would have never got the seasoning in that part of the meat, which is extremely important. So where my wrist is, that's the back part of the bone. See, and I'm getting closer and closer, and that's about at the point where you just can't cut back anymore because you, your knife would be cutting into the bone. And uh, there's really no meat back there. So The next process is you want to stab it really hard. Just keep stabbing it. Make sure you're doing this recipe when you're angry or frustrated, you know, and uh, you have a way to release that anger. I mean, you're, you're going to poke the hell out of this pork. And um, you do that because you're putting in your cloves of garlic inside, and then your marinade gets into the middle of the pork as well. Um, so you're going to flip it over. You go all the way to the bottom. Now I have some meat stuck on fat here, you know, so what you're going to do is... Um, I have this little piece of fat here that I'm going to remove real quick. It's just way too much fat on that side of the pork and it'll just create a greasy spot. Plus it'll open up the pork underneath so I can get it seasoned. So I'm going to continue poking holes in the rest of my pork. Um, I'm going to spare you the boredom and then we'll, we'll move on to the, to the next step. Okay. 
So I took some cloves of garlic and I have them. And I'm just stuffing them inside of the pork into every single hole. Don't miss a hole. Extremely, extremely important to get your entire piece of meat seasoned and um, full of marinade because you want every piece to taste the same. So now, as you can see, all of my garlic is inside of the pork. So this is the fun part where I'm taking my marinade. And, um, you know, warning, clear, clear warning for, you, for everyone. The um, adobo in here has the, a little bit of um, orange tint to it. So if you're concerned about your hands turning orange, you should wear gloves when you make this. Me, I mean, I've made this so much, and I know that right after I marinated this pork, I need to wash my hands <clears throat> right away. Because if I don't, they're going to be orange. And if you don't, your hands will be orange like an Oompa Loompa. You'll look crazy. You won't want to go out in public. So we're going to get the entire part of the bottom side of the meat. You want to get your sides here as well. And you just keep doing it. Be generous. Be very, very liberal. And rub it in, rub it in, rub it in. <clears throat> I forgot to mention there's also some um, sasong and adobo. I did tell you there was sasong in there and adobo, huh? And the marinade. Wow, silly me. I don't know. This is the problem with voiceovers. You forget. So here. My pork is done marinating. I'm going to add a little bit more adobo to my meat. I know you're thinking, oh my God, this is going to be salty. Negative. It's a dense piece of meat. It needs a lot of seasoning. So I go around the entire pork and I do that with some adobo. All right. So now it's in my deep, deep roasting pan. It needs to be deep because this creates a lot of fat and juices and you don't want it to spill over into your oven. You see how deep mine is? All right. So I have it in meat side down. You always want it skin side up. Okay. Okay. Put some aluminum foil on it. Then you're going to throw it in the oven for 400 degrees for the first hour and hour, hour and a half to two hours. And then you're going to bring it down to 300. Um, this particular piece of meat took about six hours uh, before it was tender. All right, guys, on to the rice and beans. We're going to put our rice in our calero. And then we're going to put our water inside, just enough to cover the rice. Some oil so the rice doesn't get sticky. Then we have our beans, you know, our gandules, pigeon peas. And then we're going to put in our sauce. And then we have um, our sasong. Okay, I'm going to use two packages for this amount of rice. Um, let's see here. We have some more adobo going in here. We have some recaito. Um, you can buy your um, store-bought. Uh, these are homemade. I also have some sofrito in here. I add both into my rice. I know some people only do sofrito, but I add both into my rice. So um, I don't have a recipe on this homemade um, sofrito recaito, but um, I will eventually make one, a video for it. So you're going to mix all your ingredients together just the way I'm doing it, just to get it all mixed up, and you're going to bring it up to a boil, okay? Don't touch the rice before it comes to a boil. Let it come to a boil, as you see here. Then you can take your spoon, okay, gently, because if you move the rice around too much, it's going to be gummy and disgusting. So as you can see here, this is when I know it's ready for me to put the temperature low and to cover the pot. I don't touch it anymore after that. I don't. The more you mix your rice, the more gummy and gross it's going to be. All right, so here's the pork. Mmm, look at that. I know it looks pink and you're thinking, oh my God, that's not done. It is done. Um, that's just the darker side of the pork. And this is the skin that I was talking about that a lot of people like to eat. You just remove the fat of, you know, from the bottom of the skin and scrape it off because that's kind of horrible in the palate. So you don't want to taste that. You just keep the skin on a different plate, by the way. Okay. So keep scraping that off. So now you're going to go in and start shredding this pork. It's absolutely delicious and tender. Look at how easy that shreds. I barely have to put any work into it. And look at the bone coming right off. When your bone comes right off that way, you know you've done a good job and you know you've cooked it well enough and it's going to be tender and juicy. So there's a couple of bones in this cut. I'm going to go and fish them out here, okay? And um, I'm going to continue shredding it as well. I hope that the rice wasn't um, confusing for most. So I am going to add some directions to the bottom of the video just because I didn't feel like I explained it um, proficiently enough in this video. So you see that piece of fat right here that I'm showing you? You save that because when you reheat your pork the next day, you're going to need some fat, some grease to cook it in. All right, so here it is. It's all shredded up, delicious, juicy, and tender pork. 
Okay. <clears throat> Let me show you what it looks like when it's all plated up. All right. So this is what it looks like. I have my arroz con andule, the pernil. Another thing is I serve it with fried cheese and some platano maduro, which is a sweet um, fried banana. Delicious combination for me. That right there is some fried cheese. You can get it at um, ethnic supermarkets. I mean, stop and shop and places like that should already be carrying them. All right, so here it is. If you like this video and you try the recipe and you like it, leave some feedback, share with your friends, share with your family, share the video, my channel, subscribe if you haven't done so. Thanks for watching. Bye.